Okay. So uh, first, I want to thank the organizers for uh, uh, the opportunity to speak at this conference, and uh, I'd like to uh, to talk a little bit about uh, uh, what the status of uh, of nationalists and the hierarchy problem is, and in particular, uh, a, a, an approach to it which uh, goes by the name of neutral nationalists or colorless top partners. So the question is. Uh, is the, the discovery of the Higgs and the fact that we haven't seen anything else at the LHC the end of the idea of uh, uh, natural theories of the electroweak scale? Uh, are we just giving up on naturalness? And uh, then the question is, uh, so we have already uh, uh, even experimentally seen that uh, uh, we have the weak scale, but then there is, a, there is a scale determined experimentally by direct and indirect bounds, which is already at the few TeV scale uh, here, which is telling us that what we have here in this, uh, in this gap between the weak scale and a few TeV uh, is the standard model, uh, but it's tuned to some extent. And so this is what we call the little hierarchy. And then the question is, uh, uh, this is already established experimentally as a problem. We haven't seen anything beyond the standard model. And so there is, there is a, 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 an extent to which the standard model is already experimentally determined to be a tuned theory uh, to, to some degree. Okay. And then uh, the question is, uh, the, the uh, quadratic UV sensitivity on the Higgs mass is dominated in particular by the top contribution to, to the Higgs mass square. And uh, typically what we do uh, in order to cure this in natural theories uh, of the electroweak scale is to imp impose a symmetry. And this symmetry will, uh, among other things, relate the top quark to a, a, its partner under the symmetry. And this partner will have a, a, a one loop contribution to the Higgs mass square, which will cancel this quadratic sensitivity uh, uh, to the UV scale. Uh, now, typically in, in the theories we consider for uh, for the past 20 years, the top partners uh, carry color. And then they are easily produced at the LHC, and this uh, 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 results in these stringent uh, bounds uh, for the most part. So the point is, can we build theories where uh, the top partners do not have a SU3 color, and therefore uh, uh, they are harder to have been seen at the LHC? So if the symmetry protecting the Higgs mass does not commute with the SU3 color and it exchanges into another SU3 uh, uh, let's call it SU3 prime, then these uh, top partners will be charged and this new, new color, uh, the bounds uh, will be less stringent. And uh, the hope is that these theories with colorless top partners will be more natural than the uh, extensions of the standard model we have today. So essentially the idea of these theories of colorless top partners uh, or neutral natural uh, theories uh, is to uh, fill this little hierarchy gap with the standard model plus, the, at, at, at the minimum, uh, colorless top partners so as to uh, solve at least uh, the hierarchy problem or the little hierarchy problem here. Eventually, most of the theories, uh, or all of the theories that we have thought of uh, uh, act this way will have a cutoff not far above this, uh, this scale of the few TeV. So how do we do this? Uh, so what are the, the ingredients for a neutral natural theory or for a theory with uh, colorless top partners? Well, first of all, you need a symmetry protecting the Higgs, just like any other uh, theory protecting uh, uh, the UV sensitivity of the Higgs uh, mass. Uh, it could be uh, that the Higgs is a pseudo nambu goldstone boson. It could be a, super, a, a version of supersymmetry. But you also need to extend uh, the color gauge symmetry to have at least two copies of SU3. Okay? So uh, it could be SU6 broken down to SU3 squared, or it could be two copies of SU3. We'll see some examples. Uh, and then you either impose a discrete symmetry or somehow you are going to extract the degrees of freedom by some procedure that can be generalized as orbifolding uh, such that the top partners will actually have the other color uh, uh, once we extract the, uh, the, the light degrees of freedom of these theories. Okay? And the theories that uh, have been worked on uh, uh, are, are old uh, uh, to begin with. The, I'm going to talk about the twin Higgs and folded supersymmetry. Uh, and, but there are also, as you see, any, any solution to the hierarchy problem can be turned into a colorless top partner type theory by uh, these kinds of procedure. So if you, if you just take, pick your favorite theory, for example, there is a little Higgs version called the quirky little Higgs. Uh, and so as you see, these theories uh, 
are rather old, 10 years or nine years, but uh, our interest of, uh, is renewed on, uh, uh, in them because uh, uh, the situation uh, of not having had, uh, seen anything at the LHC. So let's just quickly review the, uh, uh, the Twin Hicks. Uh, is the 10th anniversary uh, uh, of the Twin Hicks, uh, I guess. Uh, so the Hicks in this theory is a, a, a pseudo Nambu-Boston boson of a spontaneously broken global symmetry. Uh, so we start, for example, uh, there are many ways to actually do this, but let's just start with the original uh, way in which the global symmetry is SU4 broken down to SU3. And so there are seven uh, NGBs out of which uh, there will be four that we'll, uh, we'll use for the Hicks. And then, uh, so here is the potential for this uh, four of SU4 that I call H, big H. Now, uh, the next step is to gauge a subgroup of this SU4, which is SU2A times SU2B. So now the four can be uh, split in these two doublets. And we'll use this uh, top doublet, HA, as our standard model Higgs doublet. Uh, now, uh, when we gauge this uh, subgroup of SU4, the gauge interactions will break the global symmetry explicitly. And this will lead, generally, you, you know that this leads to quadratic diverging contribution to the potential of big H. So you compute those uh, 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 contributions from the gauge loops, and they are quadratically divergent. And so here uh, it is. This is GA and GB are the gauge couplings of the SU2A, SU2B. And here are the cutoffs, uh, lambda A and lambda B, which in principle, uh, I, the behavior of the theory uh, uh, the, in the UV does not have to be the same, so in principle. However, if I impose a Z2 symmetry, uh, uh, such that the behavior in the UV is the same, and then the gauge couplings GA and GB are the same, and also the cutoffs of the theory are the same since the Z2 is good in the UV, then it turns out that the uh, gauge contributions to the, the, the quadratic divergence gauge contributions are of this form. Uh, so, so if you just get the, the cutoffs uh, and the gauge couplings out, uh, and then it turns out that this is SU4 symmetric. And so uh, if you think of the, of the Higgs as coming from the NGBs in this uh, global breaking, then uh, the Higgs do, uh, do not enter H dagger A. H, H dagger H is SU4 symmetric. And so this will not contribute to the Higgs mass square. So this is essentially the philosophy of the twin Higgs idea. The imposition of this Z2 symmetry in the UV is what protects the Higgs, the Higgs uh, 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 from uh, UV sensitivity. So if you extend this to all standard model interactions, not just uh, the SU2 interactions, then essentially you have a standard model mirror sector. So we have the standard model A, which is us, the standard model B, which is the twin uh, standard model. And for example, if you look at the top Yukawas, now you can write them in this way in general. There is the A sector Yukawas and there is the B sector Yukawas uh, that will generate these quadratically diverging contributions for, for the A and the B. Uh, uh, Higgs doublets, but if you impose the Z2, once again, the contributions from uh, the Yukawas, the quadratically divergent contributions from the Yukawas are indeed uh, uh, SU4 symmetric and will not affect the Higgs mass square. There will be, yes, uh, logarithmic uh, divergence or logarithmic sensitivity to the, to the cutoff uh, because, uh, well, uh, I won't, I'm not going to the little, but there will be contributions that go like uh, HA uh, to the fourth uh, and HB to the fourth, and those contributions do have logarithmic sensitivity to the cutoff. But the, the quadratic sensitivity is all we care about here because we're trying to solve the little hierarchy uh, problem. So, so if, you, if you go to the nonlinear representation, this becomes clear. Uh, here are our, our two doublets, but I can write them as the, the uh, Nambu Goldstone bosons here exponentiating and some VEV F. Okay, and here uh, in the Nambu Goldstone matrix, I'll just will write the four degrees of freedom that I will use for the Higgs doublet, which is right here. Okay, and all the other uh, the, the other three NGBs are uh, eaten by the SU2B gauge bosons in this formulation. And so, uh, so when you do that, you can expand uh, you can expand the uh, uh, H matrix and write down rewrite the Yukawas uh, and take the first two terms of the expansion. And you will see that the cancellation of the top, our top uh, quadratic sensitivity uh, to the Higgs mass comes from this term, which is non-normalizable uh, in this, uh, and this in this nonlinear formulation. And this cancellation, you know, the, the symmetry is, is just coming from uh, this fact here. 
uh, uh, the fact that uh, uh, the Z2 symmetry imposes that the lambda A and lambda B aren't the same. And so, uh, so this cancels the quadratic divergence uh, uh, to the Higgs mass, uh, but the top partner, the B uh, 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 tops, are not carrying SU3 B color, they are uh, SU3 A color, they're carrying SU3 B color. So this is a colorless top partner uh, solving the hierarchy problem for you. So, uh, so up to this point, you have an exact Z2 symmetry, but if you do have an exact Z2 symmetry, what happens is that this VEV, or the VEV that uh, parameterizes the breaking of SU4, uh, uh, will be uh, the same as the weak scale, because essentially all the A sector has to be identical to the B sector, so our VEV and, and the VEV of the B Higgs, the twin Higgs, will be the same. So you need to break this, uh, this Z2 but you break it softly by, for example, adding, adding a term like this, a soft term like this, and this allowed a, a hierarchy, a, a mild hierarchy between the electroweak scale and this F scale of, uh, of the, the twin Higgs VEV. And, and typically what will happen, for example, for the phenomenology of the twin Higgs to start uh, uh, being explored, is that the couplings of the Higgs to standard model fields will be suppressed by the cosine of V over F, essentially, right? So V over F will be uh, uh, this, this small, this is small, there will be a small hierarchy in order to avoid bounds, uh, uh, essentially that I'm gonna show you now. If this was uh, identical uh, to our weak scale, if F was the same as the, the weak scale, then for example, the invisible uh, width of the Higgs uh, will be, uh, I don't know, 50%. So that's clearly excluded, right? So we need to break the Z2, uh, at least uh, uh, mildly, uh, in a soft way. So there are several uh, incarnations uh, 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 that are used now for, to the phenomenology, for the phenomenology at the LHC. Uh, the, uh, the one that uh, is the original is now called the identical twin. It's a complete copy of the standard model. F over V uh, goes somewhere between uh, three to 10, where the three comes from essentially the invisible width of the Higgs, and the 10 is just a matter of taste and naturalness. This will force, for example, the, the, lamp, the twin, uh, a QCD to have a, a, a strong scale which is somewhat above the QCD scale, uh, you will have light twin quarks and leptons, and then the question is whether you will, uh, for the model building, you will keep the twin photon uh, massless or you will have to break it, and this is a, a, a question of, for example, cosmology, uh, things like that. So, so this, is, this is the identical twin model. In the identical twin model, then, uh, as I said, all Higgs couplings to the standard model states are suppressed by this uh, cosine of V over F, in this way, for example, if rho is the, if the Higgs, the radial state, our, our Higgs in the twin Higgs model, then uh, it is the production uh, with respect to the standard model and the decay uh, to uh, our sector uh, states, Ws, Zs, uh, uh, Bs, etc. And then the invisible width will go like the sine square uh, of this angle times the standard model width in, in, in equivalent states times some kinematic factor delta, which is less than one, when uh, essentially the masses of the B sector are heavier than our masses. Essentially, uh, uh, so you need this uh, kinematic factor to account for the invisible width. Uh, and so as you see, when delta, uh, as, the, as, as F becomes much bigger than the electroweak scale, delta becomes much smaller than one, and you reduce the invisible width. That's the idea, right? So if you look at the, uh, uh, at the Higgs couplings, so here in the green line, you see the invisible width, uh, as a function uh, here of the top partner mass, but essentially you can see this as, uh, uh, as a function of uh, also the scale F. The top partner mass is proportional to some, to some extent to F over V times uh, uh, the top uh, Yukawa coupling times the cosine or the cotangent actually of V over F. So essentially, uh, 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 if, you, if, you, if you just look at the, at the current bound from the invisible width, you probably are, are around this area over here, which still leaves you with a tuning, which is not too bad, it's 30% tuning for this theory. On the blue line, we see uh, the uh, signal strength for whatever uh, channel of the Higgs that you can imagine, uh, compared, uh, so compared to the standard model, so the signal strength, and you see that uh, you get to signal strengths that are uh, uh, around 5% of the standard model, uh, and uh, you still are around 10% tuning. 
So you could imagine that you will reach high luminosity LHC uh, stages just by measuring the Higgs coupling. Uh, uh, and then you, you wonder if you're going to be able to see, to tell, to exclude these theories just by looking at the Higgs couplings and, and, and excluding deviations. And if you, if you are uh, with a 5% uh, a signal strength, you still will have theories that are, uh, you know, this theory will still be around 10% natural or just few below 10% uh, natural. So, so it is possible to imagine that uh, the, the, tw the identical twin Higgs uh, may still be around as a, uh, not that fine-tuned, even at the end of the high luminosity LHC, which is, of course, terrible, but, uh, but, but this, uh, uh, this is the nature of this, this, this model, right? Uh, now, uh, there is also uh, another version uh, uh, which is more tailored to, to having signals, which is called the fraternal twin. In the fraternal twin, uh, only the minimal fermion content to solve hierarchy problem is considered. Uh, this is kind of like the, the twin Higgs version of natural SUSY. Uh, in here, you only have the third generation quarks and, and leptons. And then uh, it turns out that the glue balls of this uh, twin sector are the lightest uh, hadronic states, and they cannot decay to light uh, mesons because there are no light quarks in this theory. And so it turns out that these glue balls, uh, the Higgs can decay to these glue balls with branching ratios that are, okay, very small, 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 4. However, these glue balls uh, are long, typically long-lived in this model, and they can generate highly displaced vertices. So the hope in, in the twin Higgs models that have this fraternal twin type uh, 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 spectrum is that you will be able to see uh, uh, from this, uh, the case of, uh, of the Higgs to these uh, twin glue balls, these highly displaced vertices. Uh, okay, so, so for this, you really have to go to this fraternal twin uh, setup. But other than that, you just look at, uh, you have to look at the Higgs couplings. Uh, uh, recently, there's been a lot of uh, uh, activity in the twin Higgs dark matter uh, uh, idea. Why is this interesting? Well, it turns out that the twin strong sector generates a higher strong scale by a little bit, as I mentioned earlier, which means that uh, in the identical twin case, the, the twin uh, 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 baryons are a, a factor of a few heavier than our proton. Uh, and so this uh, is very interesting for asymmetric dark matter uh, uh, model building. And in fact, there's uh, some recent work uh, by Marco Farina. And here you can see, uh, uh, um, assuming just uh, uh, essentially uh, that this factor of a few is between four and, and, and six, so you get five. This, fa this five factor is, is if, the, if the mass of the twin uh, uh, baryons is five times our proton mass, then you will get the, uh, the, uh, uh, the relic density you need uh, to, for dark matter. And so in this case, uh, it, it, you compute uh, the cross-section uh, 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 in direct detection uh, by using either higher dimensional operators or Higgs portal uh, interactions. And this is what you get from one TV higher dimensional operators down. Uh, and so you see that uh, uh, it's possible that uh, this simple and natural idea of having a, a twin Higgs dark matter uh, may be accessible somehow in the future uh, uh, experiments. Uh, although if you just look at the, at the Higgs interaction, it's somewhere down here below the neutrino flow. But then there is some activity also uh, for the fraternal uh, twin Higgs, there are some papers here. There is also either asymmetric dark matter, which is typically what you want to do for twin bottom baryons. Uh, in, in this case, only the bottom uh, uh, will be your, your baryon because there are no other light quarks. Uh, this is a, three, a spin three half uh, 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 dark matter candidate. But you can also do uh, uh, thermal relic. Uh, uh, in this case, mostly the, the twin tau would be the dark matter. So this is, this is what the Twin Higgs uh, 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 does for you. Uh, and so uh, it's, it's, a difficult, it's a difficult phenomenology uh, if you really stick to the, twin, uh, to the identical Twin Higgs. And in principle, uh, uh, there could be some deviations in the Higgs coupling, but uh, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to see uh, what the path to a, a smoking gun would be that will definitely get this model. Uh, now, uh, uh, what about supersymmetry? Uh, can we build a, a, a supersymmetric theory that uh, does this thing, that has colorless uh, uh, squarks, so that you, know, you wouldn't have produced the squarks at the LHC? And uh, 
The answer is, uh, is not really, uh, but uh, yes and no. So let's see what does that mean. You know? so, uh, so this, this theory goes by, go by the, uh, it's not twin supersymmetry, it's folded supersymmetry, but that's, I don't know. It's a, we, uh, there's a motivation that hopefully will be clear. Uh, so the idea is that, uh, again, exactly the same, this quarks uh, in the cancellation, uh, uh, we, uh, we don't want them to have a SU3 color. So how do we do this idea? How do we implement this idea that the quarks canceling the quadratic sensitivity to the, uh, of the Higgs mass uh, do not have color. How, how do we do this? So in order to, uh, to motivate this idea, I think this toy example is all we need for, for technically. Uh, and, and this go, goes by the name of bifold protection. Uh, uh, and, and essentially, this, uh, this simple model is like this. Suppose you have a, a global UN, a flavor symmetry, which is this UN. So I have a singlet, and I have these this, uh, fermions which have this, uh, this there are fundamental uh, of the UN. Uh, and then uh, uh, we have this simple uh, 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 coupling between the singlet and, the, and, the, and these fermions. And of course, in this, uh, in this setup, the singlet uh, is uh, quadratically divergent, has a quadratic sensitivity to, uh, to uh, UV scales. This is, uh, this, this is the obvious uh, thing. So the first step to have bifold protection is to supersymmetrize the theory and to think of this as a superpotential. OK? Uh, so fine, now, now, now you have some protection for supersymmetry in principle, if supersymmetry is exact. Then the second step, which is the, the bi in bifold protection, is to duplicate the, the flavor index between n to 2n. So now I have 2n in the loop that gives me the quadratic divergence. So, you, so far, it looks like a useful thing, useless thing to do, but let's see what we do with that. The next step is to define uh, a, a parity, which, which is actually an element of, this, of the global group. This global group, this U2N, now is instead of UN, I have a U2N flavor symmetry. Uh, this is one element of this group, and I pick this, this uh, element uh, with pluses in the diagonal up to from 1 to N, and with minuses from N plus 1 to 2N. Right? So this element will be uh, define this transformation. And then it turns out that if you look at that superpotential, the theory is invariant under the following transformations. The singlet going to itself, the, the Qs going to minus gamma Q, and then the Q bars going to minus gamma, well, this is the star, but this one is real, minus gamma star Q bar. And also, there is, the theory is also invariant under this Z2R, let's call it Z2R symmetry, where boson, under which bosons uh, transformed uh, to themselves, and fermions to minus themselves, okay? So now, so, so the theory is invariant under this, but now I'm going to uh, ask that the states uh, that are odd under the product of these two symmetries are projected out. So this is a sort of like an orbital project projection. You can think of this as uh, being an extra dimensional theory, and this would be like a boundary condition, so I'm gonna uh, say, uh, this will be like a boundary condition projecting out states that do not, uh, that are not even under this, this, this product. So here is the Z2 gamma. So here I have the fermions from 1 to n and from n plus 1 to uh, uh, 2n. So uh, uh, gamma it, it hits them with a minus 1 here and with a plus 1 here. And the scalars, as I said before, because of this Z2 R, are, are uh, uh, um, are, are even here and odd in the fermions, okay? So here is, is, so now the product of these two has to be positive, and so what happens is now that this mechanism essentially selects the fermions with indices between one and n, so these guys will stay in the spectrum at low energies, and the scalars with, uh, with n plus one to two n uh, indices. So now I have this theory that is, uh, uh, in principle, not supersymmetric anymore because this Q1 to Qn are not superpartners of the Qn plus 1 to Q2n scalars. However, what I have now is that, uh, so this is, this is my low energy spectrum. I, I are, are orbifolded out or, or modded out all the rest of the, of the, of the uh, uh, states. And I ended up with this in the low energy theory. But still, I have uh, in the loop the fermions from 1 to n and the scalars from n plus 1 to 2n cancel each other's quadratic divergences, and the theory is 
uh, uh, UV insensitive, at least quadratically, to one loop. Okay? So this, this is the mechanism by for protection, and it's inspired in the large N orbifold correspondence that uh, uh, was, in, was, uh, impo uh, was uh, proposed by these people uh, years, many, many years, almost 20 years ago. So this, this uh, allows us to construct then a theory that has at one loop no quadratic sensitivity in, in, the, in, this, in this singlet, in this scalar uh, particle, but uh, uh, it's not supersymmetric. There is some sort of accidental supersymmetry in the low energy spectrum, but not real SUSI. Okay, so in that sense, it was the, it's not SUSI, but some leftover supersymmetry is there. Okay? Uh, if you think about it, this, the, at two loop, this doesn't work anymore. Right? For example, this, the scalars are not protected by this, by this symmetry. The scalars themselves will be quadratically sensitive. Uh, if I close, if I open this loop of the scalars and I close the singlet, the scalars will, the mass of the scalar will diverge, you know, will have a quadratic divergence. That means that if I have a two loop contribution to the singlet, it also will have an, a quadratic divergence uh, to the singlet at two loop. But I don't care about two loops, I only care about one loop because I want to solve the little hierarchy problem. Two loops will uh, uh, be important uh, above that scale of few TeV. So to implement this then, uh, all I do is now I have to, of course, do this in the real world. So now I'm going to have to have my three copies of SU3, my Z2 that relates the, the, the SU3 couplings uh, in the UV, and then the weak sector I'm going to leave untouched. And I'm going to assume that uh, the orbifold in some extra dimensional theory gives me the fermions of our sector with, with our color, but the scalars with the wrong color. And essentially, this le leads to these interactions in the, in the, uh, in the, Yukawa, in the top Yukawa, which uh, still protects uh, Higgs mass squared to one loop. Okay, so, so this is the setup in extra dimensional theories. I have no time to talk about it, obviously. And so, uh, 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 SUSI is broken in an extra dimensional uh, uh, setup uh, by boundary conditions, and then uh, essentially I end up uh, 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 I end up with uh, with this spectrum. This hypermultiplice leads to our our uh, fermions, and this uh, uh, hypermultiplice will have scalar zero modes with the wrong color. Okay, so this is this is what we do. Uh, uh, the interesting thing that I do want to point out is that the scalar masses are actually calculable. Uh, in this theory, and this is very old calculation from these people, uh, because essentially what happens here is that SUSI breaking is non-local. Essentially, this setup, we have an n equals two supersymmetry in the bulk, and then you have n equals one supersymmetry in, in this fixed point and in this fixed point, but these two n equals one supersymmetries are different. And so the, the low energy spectrum sees a broken SUSI, uh, but in order for uh, the zero modes to, to acquire masses, I will have to go to, from this point to this point, so I see the different two n equals one supersymmetries, and then, then I realize SUSI is broken. And so this gives me this uh, sort of a uh, calculation of the, of the masses. So the, the masses are several hundred GeV if I assume that one over R, for example, is a few TV, is my E bounds, right? That's all this transparency says. So this is the setup. I have accidental SUSI between, say, a, a few TeV and a weak scale, but then there will be a 5D SUSI, and eventually it's a cutoff because this is a non-normalizable theory, and there will have to be a UV completion. Right? All of these theories, the twin Higgs, quick little Higgs, folded SUSI, they have a cutoff, which is not very far from this, this few TeV scale. So they are really, they require UV completions to become actual real theories. And that's just an important thing. I don't have time to talk about signals, uh, but there are signals. And I'm just going to say that the fact that I have an SU3 that confines the SU3 prime uh, and that the squarks are hundreds of GeV, it means that they don't hadronize. Okay? So these guys will have quirky type uh, behavior. Uh, uh, they will generate sort of a global radiation as well as a photon radiation. They will have to come back to each other and annihilate. And from there, you can get bounds which uh, are right now at the 450 GeV level. So I'm going to skip uh, this, and I'm just going to uh, summarize. So we still have natural tiers of electroweak symmetry breaking that are not ruled out by data. It's true. The signals at collider are different. I didn't have time to talk about this. But for example, in folded SUSI, glue balls uh, are, uh, 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 can be produced uh, 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 
both in this, in this squirt production they will emit it, and also Higgs could decay to them, and these globules will actually have displaced vertices or interesting decays, and so in principle there are interesting signals for these globules. Uh, I didn't talk about it, but I just want to flash the reference for this person that, uh, that this, did this great work, and you'll see in this paper that uh, uh, global uh, decays in folded SUSI could be an important signal at the LHC in the future. So, uh, it, however, it's not impossible to imagine that uh, it will end up high luminosity LHC with some natural uh, parameter space in some theory like identical twin Higgs, and still uh, we haven't seen anything. It, it's not an impossible scenario, okay? Uh, but all of these theories have low cutoffs uh, below uh, 20 TeV, so experimentally, this would point to higher energies, obviously. Uh, in theory, it, it would point to the fact that we need uh, uh, more reasonable view, view completions, okay? Uh, and of course, I pointed out to the fact that there is interesting uh, dark matter model building. Okay, thank you. So we have time for uh, one or two questions. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe three, if uh, they are quick. <laughs> So could you comment, give me a comment on the dark radiation or effective, effective number of neutrinos? I think in this model, in this model, you you'd have twin neutrinos or twin photons, and it may 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 conflict with the Planck result. Oh. Right, right, right. Uh, okay, so okay, I didn't want to comment on this because we are working on it, but uh, uh, certainly you uh, uh, you have to get rid of the. In the identical twin case, you have to get rid of the twin neutrinos somehow. This is non-trivial because you have to uh, get rid of them in a way, you know, you break the Z2 somehow. Uh, and so ideally what you do is you break the Z2 because you have to break the Z2 anyway. Uh, at the same time, giving, by a mechanism that also gives masses to the twin neutrinos and uh, to the twin photon. That's, that would, that's very ambitious and that's what we're trying to do. And so, so you really have to do that because uh, you can you can Im imagine that you can get rid you can get rid of the neutrinos and keep the twin photon, but that's still borderline with uh, with structure formation, amazingly enough. So uh, but you can get rid of you know NF is still borderline for one degree of freedom like the twin photon, but there's still problems uh, that my collaborators know much more about uh, that have to do with uh, silk dumping and things like that. So, so I think you have to get rid in these theories. You have to get rid of the twin photon also. Yeah, you're right. So in the d discussion of natural SUSY, we usually talk about the need at low energies for three states, uh, Higgsino, STOP, and then at two loops, Gluinos. But in, in this context, you're really just talking about the color as top partners. Is there a reason why I don't have problems in these scenarios with stuff at at tree level, you know, the analogy of the Higgsino, or why I don't really have to care about two-loop effects, you know, the analogy of the Galeno. Uh, uh, so you're talking about uh, the, the twin, the, the fraternal twin case, where I only have... Or, or, or any, any of these cases, you know, is there a mapping between the natural SUSY language of what we expect for the low energy states, and again, it's Higgsino, stop, and Galeno is what we say, kind of tree level, one loop, two loop. So, so, for example, in the folded SUSI, you have the Higgsinos. In fact, they are, they are candidates to dark matter, so you have them there. Uh, and, then, uh, um, uh, and then the Gluinos are not that heavy. They are, they are so uh, they, will, uh, they, they are at the, at the say, say, one over R, right? So, uh, so in principle, uh, and now in the twin case, um, in the twin case, in the fraternal twin case, um, you, you have, the, issue, the, the glue is still there, you know, that is, it's, even conf it's not broken at all. So, so it's not, yeah, it's not, it's not quite, quite a mapping, but it's, the glue is still around. It's confined, it forms all kinds of, uh, uh, of bound states at low energy, you know, 5, 10, 20 GeV. Yeah. Depends on lambda QCD prime. So, yeah. So your point is really to solve the little hierarchy problem and not caring too much about the, well, the big I, one. I do care about the big one, but uh, <laughs> if, 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 the, if the idea, uh, it turns out that all the uh, neutral natural natural theories uh, uh, are such that they have a cutoff, and then they, they, they are usually such that you solve only the little hierarchy problem at one loop. You can do that. And that this may be uh, the first step you need to do, but uh, we need to work on UV completions to convince ourselves that this is uh, sensible low energy theory, of course. 
Okay, so uh, uh, you are giving us very good arguments for a 100 TV collider, I see, yeah? <laughs> so thank you very much, and uh, okay. thank you again.